How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a moment to look at the Mezco 112th Collective KG Beast Action Figure. And as usual, the box art for this guy, like the rest of them, is very simplistic. This time it's the KG Beast's facial logo dominating the front of the box, while the side has that logo again, Mezco 112th Collective. And the back is where all the real fun begins, where you get to see an image of the figure, the heads, all the rest of the weapon accessories, as well as the hands and the figure stand. And then removing the cardboard sheathing over top the package we can see the figure and all the what the hell where's the figure he's not on the inside did I just get scammed? I'm just kidding. This is what you see when you take the cardboard sheathing off of the rest of the packaging. All right, super friends, here's everything that came inside of the box, including the KG Beast and his accessories, of which there are many. For starters, he's got three head sculpts. The one that comes on the body, which is by far my favorite. They did a fantastic job on that bad boy. And the detail on this really is fantastic. They did a great job with the sculpt of this. There's not a lot as far as paint detail goes, but you really don't need it with this one. This head sculpt looks really, really great. And then we have the other head sculpt with a mask on, and I really like this one too. I'm actually really impressed with how good the eyes look on this. They really did a fantastic job painting the eyes. I will say this though, I really do kind of wish they had have included the ability to lift the face flap up of the mask there. You can see where the mask actually attaches over the ear, and it looks like there's a bit of like a, like a hinge on the top of the mask there. I really wish that that was somehow incorporated into this figure. And then we have perhaps the most impressive of the head sculpts. That's the unmasked version. This looks amazing. Seriously, just the sculpt itself is, is just I'm blown away. Look at the wrinkles on his back of his head. And you got the stubbly, short shaven hair. And if you rub the top of his head, there's actually a little bit of texture there as well. It's not just painted. This guy looks stunning. He also comes with two sledgehammers, a very big one and a very small one. It's always good to have a variety when you're gonna break kneecaps and ankles. He also comes with a handgun and a bunch of different magazines. KG Beast also comes with his arm gun and a spearhead and a sickle as well as a great big machete. And let's not forget that he comes with a bunch of extra spiked knuckled hands, as well as the action figure stand with an arm, and a little baggie to put all your stuff in so you don't lose it. And now let's take a closer look at the figure, shall we? This dude is fantastic. Every sculpted piece on this figure has the utmost care taken as far as the level of detail goes, and the fabric portions of his uniform have been made very well also. I can't think of one important detail they missed while they also added their own because that's what Mezco does. They add a lot of their own little pizzazz to each figure. On his back here, you not only have a scabbard that very nicely holds the machete, but you've also got a little clip here on the back for holding his handheld scythe, as well as his mini sledgehammer right here on the bottom of his belt. On this side, we have a holster for his firearm, and it fits in there nicely. Not very tight, might I add, though. I'm just going to tip it upside down. Oh, there it goes. And over on this side right here, he's got a little spot to stick one of the extra magazines of ammunition, as well as another spot on this side for sticking the ammunition for his arm gun. I will say it is a little bit unfortunate that these little pockets here don't open. That would be kind of a fun little detail as well, where you could stick the ammunition right here in his pockets. I like these spiked shoulder pads, too. <laughs> they really make him look like a member of the League. Legion of Doom. And not only are they both painted quite well and sculpted very nicely, but so are the sets of spikes on his gloves right there. They look great. Both of them do. They both look really fantastic. Now, for attaching the arm gun, you detach the hand and the wrist gauntlet that fits over top, as well as the wrist itself. This piece comes right out. I'm going to leave this on here just for a second to show you that you can actually put the spike eh, right on the end just like that. Now my arm is harpoon. But we're gonna pull this bad boy off and pop the arm gun on there. Oh, and it fits nice and tight, which is good. That means it ain't falling off anytime soon. And while we're at it, let's give him his sledgehammer hand. Oh, well, you could put anything in the hand. I just chose to put the sledgehammer there. Oh, man. This dude just looks so badass. I will say that I do kind of wish that he was just a little bit more imposing. Like when compared to the much lower priced DC Multiverse version of the KG Beast, 
I feel like that one has a body size and thickness that I would have much preferred that this figure came with. Now, if you're into the ever popular action figure photography, you're gonna wanna know how well articulated he is, so let's get into that part. He's got an articulation point in the waist and in the torso, which combined do give him a pretty good range of fairly realistic motion. He's bending down, he's looking up. I will say that having all of this fun stuff on his back will get in the way a little bit of the articulation, but not much. It, it can move out of the way. KG Beast articulation for the arms is you got those rounded hinges down there in the armpits, and they go all around. They do what you would expect. These shoulder pauldrons don't get in the way, not even one little bit, which is very nice. You have the bicep swivel. You've got your single jointed elbows that do 90 degrees, nothing more than that, but they do rotate around in a circle. And then you've got obviously your pegged wrists right there that go around in a circle. There's not really a lot of back and forth motion. Actually, this one's not really a pegged wrist. Well, it is, it's an extremely pegged wrist. I meant to say this one. <laughs> it's got that rounded peg hinge and it's okay. The articulation is not super great. It's it's typical for Mezco. As for the articulation above the shoulders, he's got obviously the ball peg the inside the head and that does give a pretty darn good range of motion, but you've also got an articulation point in the base of the neck here under the seam and that adds a little bit as well. You can kind of see it going back and forth there. Oh boy, I really wish that I didn't have the black background for a KG beast figure that's dressed all in black. Stupid me. The groins on these guys, as usual, it's hard to tell exactly what they're gonna get. I'm sure if they weren't wearing pants, you would get a lot more motion out of these guys, but the pants usually does kind of get in the way of them, but they are the rounded ball hinges. You've also got your articulation in the way of a thigh cut here. You've got, I'm gonna assume, as usual, it's gonna be the double jointed knees. I can't see them, but I'm assuming and there is a little bit of roundy motion here at the top of the boot, but I wouldn't call it a complete boot cut there. And then of course you have your uh, your peg, ball pegs down here in the ankles. I feel like overall he does have a pretty good range of motion. It's average par for the course for Mezco 112th Collective. We all know that if you're looking for the super articulated figures, Mezco figures aren't it, but we don't buy these figures because they're super articulated. We buy them because they're a good mix of style, articulation, quality, accessory count. There's a number of reasons. I know for some people articulation is one of the biggest factors for them. For me, it is a big factor, but it is not the defining factor. And since I've already kind of gotten into a little bit now, I guess I'll just end the video off with what I actually think of this figure, which clearly, you, you by now, you figured out that I actually really like this guy. I will say that it's a little bit of a strange choice on Mezco's part to choose to release the KG Beast before they release characters made in the likeness of the Riddler or Bane or the Penguin. As in, bigger, much more popular villains from Batman's rogues gallery. But I'm certainly very glad that they did choose to make the KG Beast because he's such an interesting looking figure and I feel like they completely banged it out of the park with this guy. I think that he looks fantastic, and he's going to look stunning with the rest of my DC Comics Mezco 112th Collective figures. Anyway, super friends, that indeed is my story and I'm sticking to it. Hopefully you found this review to be interesting, insightful, and just a fun waste of time for the last however long this thing has taken. If you have, you know where all the buttons that do all the things are, and I will see you next time with the next one. Have a super awesome DC day, everybody, and take care.